is here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, everybody. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Folks, this is very, very important through the jubilation celebrations. You're hearing a lot of very stupid people on TV and radio. Not all, of course. There's some really, really good people. But there's a lot of very stupid people. And they're telling you, Ignore the past. Ignore history. They sound like liberals. And many of them are former leftists, by the way. They sound like the very progressives who they claim to detest. Obama's the one who says the world begins today. Forget about the past. And if you do, and you do, have even the slightest comprehension of what took place 100, 120 years ago with these statists, you know how outrageous that kind of a position is. So when you hear politicians and morons go on about, forget about Reagan, forget about the founding fathers, they're old-time liberals because that's what Obama would tell you. The world begins today because we're just so smart. We're just so cool. And I'm going to explain this in some detail. First, I want to make something very, very clear from my platform, and I think you'll agree with me. Bob Corker, the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, undermined the treaty clause of the Constitution, handed power to Barack Obama he did not have, flipped the treaty clause provision so you actually needed a supermajority of senators to stop what Obama did with Iran, and in essence supported the Iran deal, even though he later claimed he was opposed to it, because Obama was then free to enter into the worst arrangement America has ever entered into, and giving $150 billion to the enemy. And there they are perfecting their ICBMs. There they are building nuclear warheads, threatening our ships in international waters. This guy, Bob Corker, is a disaster. And I am told he's under serious consideration for Secretary of State. So I just want to make it clear from where I sit. We, the Levinites here, we will go to war over this. With all the great people who are out there who would be wonderful Secretaries of State, Secretaries of Defense, Attorneys General, and so forth. Bob Corker must not be one of the individuals nominated for that position. And we will fight it in Congress, too, in the United States Senate. That man, that man undermined the Constitution, undermined the treaty provision, and helped hand Barack Obama exactly what he wanted with Iran. And I am sick and tired of Republicans like this. We cannot have any more losers as Secretary of State. Put John Bolton in there. Put somebody else in there. Absolutely no to Bob Corker. No way. And yes, we will go to war over that. Win, lose, or draw. I told you. I'm not one of the groupies. The groupies out there, you know who they are. They got their heads so far, you know where. Forget about them. They're commercials. They're caricatures of themselves. Old men and old women going on and on about how wonderful they are. Forget about them. This isn't a nursing home, even though I have no problem with it. Now, here's what I wanted to tell you in a broader context. These personnel decisions early on in this administration are going to make or break the Trump administration. There are two million federal employees a relative handful of presidential appointees. And under them, there's about 3,000 political appointees. These presidential appointees to these cabinets will determine the fate of this administration and this country. 
If you put somebody as the head of Health and Human Services who is not committed, committed not just as a matter of statute, but in terms of the regulations and the rules of controlling that bureaucracy and getting rid of Obamacare, then we will not get rid of Obamacare. If you put somebody as Secretary of Defense who is not committed to muscling up the Defense Department and our military services, it will not happen. If you put somebody in as Attorney General who is a loose cannon, you will bog down your administration for its entirety with a rogue, out-of-control attorney general. And somebody who comes to mind to me is Chris Christie. Shouldn't be anywhere near the Justice Department. And frankly, neither should Giuliani. You know him from Fox and others. He seems like a nice guy and so forth and so on. This is the same guy who is marching people down the street in handcuffs and in many cases later had to let them go. You can't have that, in my humble opinion. I wouldn't mind him over at the uh, Department of Homeland Security, <clears throat> where he's in charge of border security. That's fine. But I'm just going through this with you. But even more. Does this sound like an outsider administration? Christie? Giuliani? Gingrich? Sessions? Corker? We're the outsiders. I know we need to work with Congress. You can do that. We need some new blood, some fresh blood. And not only that, the executive branch is where the action is. The executive branch is where the action is. The Democrats take the executive branch, and they take it as far as they can push it because they know they control this massive administrative state. They need to slash the federal government right out of the box. Slash it. These are key markers. These are key things to look for. Which is why you do learn from the Reagan administration. Which is why you do learn from the Coolidge administration. Which is why you do learn from the framers of the Constitution. That's what conservatism is all about. That's what knowledge is all about. You take the most successful administrations and you study them and you say, why were they the most successful administrations? That's what you do. Otherwise, you're in the hands of Mitch McConnell. You're in the hands of Paul Ryan. And Washington will devour you rather than you devouring Washington. The entire statist movement, they can call themselves progressive, over 100 years or so ago and since, has as its purpose to use the power of this massive federal leviathan to advance its agenda. We need to use the massive le federal leviathan to start to devour itself and to advance our agenda. One of the so-called intellectuals of that period, here's what he wrote. The progressive democracy is bound to be as much interested in efficient administration as it is in reconstructive legislation. Listen to this. Its future as the expression of a permanent public interest, a permanent public interest, is tied absolutely to an increase of executive authority and responsibility. It cannot get along without an adequate and efficient administrative organization responsible to the governor, and in this case the president, just as the governor is responsible to his constituents. This is a complete reversal of the founding. They know all the power is in these massive departments and agencies they've created. They know they have the power to kill industries, the power to save industries, the power to create. They have enormous power. Now that the Republicans have monopoly power in Washington, D.C., monopoly power, they control the House, they control the Senate, they control the office of the presidency, and they are in charge of the fourth branch, the administrative state. They must do something effective. 
They must do something effective and not dance around the edges. Why won't they slash the federal government by 20%? Why shouldn't they? We have almost 10 million more. Well, let me put it to you this way. We have more government employees than we do manufacturing employees. There's something wrong. Something terribly wrong. Now, we want them to clean out the swamp. That's what they said. Clean out the swamp. We want them to slash government. Then slash it. May I ask you a question? What's to stop them but themselves? I'm quite serious about this. What is to stop them but themselves? The left knows how to use the power of the presidency and the bureaucracy. You're going to bring these these failed governors? Christie is a failed governor. You're going to bring a guy like that into your administration? You're going to put him in charge of the transition? Where he's bringing in Bush people and Romney people? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing more on this program right now than everybody else combined in this business to help Donald Trump, to help the Republicans. I'm doing more by spelling this out based on my own real-life experiences. This is what needs to be done. So keep an eye on who's being considered for what positions. Participate in this process, because this is where this administration will be successful, potentially wildly successful, or a failure, potentially a dismal failure. Because Donald Trump can't run all these departments and agencies and get into the weeds. That's the job of the cabinet secretary, the agency head. Keep an eye on who he appoints to run the EPA. Keep an eye on who he intends to appoint to run the Interior Department, which is massive. Farmers and ranchers and so many other people are affected. Keep an eye on who he intends to appoint as Attorney General. Absolutely crucial. Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense. Keep an eye on who he intends to appoint as his chief of staff, who will control what comes into the office of the president and what goes out from the office of the president. An enormously powerful job. Keep an eye on all these things. And I can tell you right now that Republicans in Congress are working very, very hard to try and place strategically people they like. People they can work with. Told you I'm not a groupie. The groupies are all over the place. You want to hear them? Go ahead. You know, fine, fine. Then they'll tell you next month how they're independent. Then they'll tell you next month how they never liked this. Then they'll tell you next month how they led this. And by the way, what I should be doing is trademarking my phrases. Because they become enormously popular with the backbenchers, and they repeat them. And I should license it to them and charge them 25 bucks every time they use them. One of my favorite phrases in defining the press, Mr. Producer, remember? Praetorian Guard Media. Been using it for years. The Praetorian Guards. The Praetorian Guard Media. Have you heard other hosts use that now? National hosts and local hosts? Well, call them and ask them why they do that, why they can't think for themselves. I can go on and on. But in any event here, I spell all this out to provide advice to this incoming new administration so it will do, so it will be very, very successful in my view if it can avoid the mistakes, so it can learn from experience and history unlike leftist buffoons, old and new, who don't even understand history. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. You know, uh, I've talked about this before. I even talked about it at CPAC last year. 
we've had enormous Republican gains under Barack Obama. Do you know that? Enormous Republican gains, and yet he's had enormous success imposing his ideological will on us, hasn't he? And there's a piece in the uh, Hill newspaper that sums it up pretty well by Reed Wilson. Republicans expanded their ranks of governors, winning Democratic held seats in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Missouri. The party also made gains in state executive offices and in legislatures across the country. Now, this has been going on, folks, for six years. For six years. These Senate races, in almost every one of them where the Republicans beat the Democrats, they outpaced Trump. They got more votes than Trump. Toomey outpaced him in Pennsylvania. Johnson outpaced him in Wisconsin. Ruby outpaced him in Florida. I'm saying that it's due to Barack Obama in many respects. Republicans won control of the Iowa State Senate, the Kentucky House, the Minnesota State Senate. Democrats gained enough seats to pick up control of both chambers in Nevada State Legislature as well as New Mexico State House. North Carolina Attorney General Roy Cooper leads Governor Pat McGrory by just 5,000 votes out of 2.5 million cast. The race has not been called. But the results mean Republicans appear likely to have added to their already considerable power in the states. It's enormous. Now, of course, they want to credit Trump. Trump has nothing to do with this. The numbers for the presidential race are down by 4 to 5 million. And in 2012, they were down 4 to 5 million from 2008. People at the presidential level are not voting like they used to vote. And the media will continue to push this because they're trying to defend and protect Barack Obama. Barack Obama has been a disaster for the Democrat Party. A disaster. They lost the House, they lost the Senate, now they lost the presidency. They're losing legislature after legislature, governorship after governorship. It's amazing that the Republicans held on to the Senate in a year where 25 seats or so are up out of 33. Out of 33. There's no wave election here. There's just too few votes for there to be a wave election. But those people who have voted, they cannot stand the Democrat Party. They cannot stand Obama. And they want this country turned around. I'll be right back. This is the nation's town hall meeting, and you can join in at 877-381-3811. You can tell who the serious people are in this business. <laughs> you really can, can't you? It's pretty easy. You can tell those who are sophomoric, those who are superficial, those who are plagiarists. I don't know the best time to play this. I want to play this now. I'm anxious to play this. We'll swing back. Don't worry. Stephen A. Smith. Now, Stephen A. Smith at ESPN, Satellite Radio, we don't always agree, but he is a friend. I have enormous respect for him. And there's areas where we disagree vehemently. I mean, we don't really go at it. That's not the point. But he listens to this show frequently, and I try to listen to his show. It's just on at a certain time where it's difficult, but I, but I heard something today that I really, really liked. I want you to check this out. Here's Stephen A. on ESPN's first take yesterday, Hat Tip Independent Journal Review. Cut 12, go. Did he betray his cause? He absolutely betrayed his cause. As far as I'm concerned, Colin Kaepernick is absolutely irrelevant. I don't want to see him again. I don't want to hear from him again. I don't want to hear a damn word about anything that he has to say about our nation, the issues that we have, racial injustices, needing change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He comes across as a flaming hypocrite. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not interested in a damn word that he has to say. And quite frankly, I hope he goes away. He's lucky to be in the league right now. And Colin Kaepernick, after all this noise that you made, even though you didn't intend to do so by a fan- and our military servicemen and women and pointing out about how you wanted to bring attention to racial injustices and beyond this in this country to turn around 
and not to even take your behind to the polls to vote for a particular candidate, it is shameful. Absolutely shameful. Him of all people, because of the position he took, because of the attention he brought to the issues, the fact that you don't even have the decency to go to the polls and activate yourself in this election, as our president said, is a damn shame. I don't want to hear another word from Colin Kaepernick. It's a waste of time. A matter of fact, I would personally make a request to the media in this nation, wherever he is, if he ain't on that football field trying to throw another damn incomplete pass, <laughs> do me a favor and make sure one thing. Take the camera away from him. It means nothing. Because for him not to vote, as far as I'm concerned, everything he said meant absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I don't want to hear another damn word from him. Nothing. Let me tell you something about Stephen A. Smith. Again, there are things he says you may disagree with, things he says you may agree with. He's a patriot. He does love this country. Loves this country. I know this for a fact. So, uh, I mean, he listens to me. He doesn't have to listen to me. He could blow me off, but he doesn't. So, uh, I thought this was right on. Absolutely right on, and I wanted you to hear that. No particular place in the show. I don't need a particular place in the show. I was thinking about talking about Rousseau with you, and I said, ah, nobody will care about that right now. Henry Corley? Ah, nobody even knows who Henry Corley is. John Dewey? Well, some people know who John Dewey was. Nah, I don't think people are interested in that. At least not right now. Maybe another day. Maybe another day. So I was saying, these big gains Republicans have made. Huge. 33 governorships now. 33 governorships. More state legislatures. And as I continue to say, time and time and time again, this is where the action should be for constitutional conservatives. You won't hear any other host Certainly no other national host continue to talk about this. Instead, they're groupies, they're pom-pom guys and girls, they're, they're the Rockettes, call them what you will. They're good at regurgitating, and they're good at, uh, you know, going on websites and pulling stories off and so forth and so on. We do better than that, you and I. That's why you're here. You could be anywhere. We believe in federalism. We believe in the Constitution. We believe in the Tenth Amendment. We believe in natural law and natural rights. We believe in the sanctity of the individual. And so we believe in Article 5 Convention of States. We do not believe in cults of personality. We do not believe in political saviors. We have our favorites... But we don't do this cult of personality stuff. We leave that to the groupies. What I'm trying to say here is that the American people, in community after community, in county after county, in state after state, are speaking, not in one election cycle, not in two election cycles, but in one election cycle after another. One after another. They are installing Republicans in their state houses. They are installing Republicans in their state senates. They are installing Republicans in their governorships. Massive Republican control of the states. It doesn't even go reported. A revolution has occurred. A Federalist revolution. An an Amendment 10 revolution. The progressive statists, it's 100 years ago, want you to pretend it doesn't exist. The Republican ignoramuses want you to believe it doesn't exist. This is where our power is, exactly where it needs to be. Not in some department or agency. This is exactly the way the Constitution is supposed to work. And we will not take advantage of it to secure our liberty and our security and our private property rights. We will not take advantage of it. And we must. My dying breath. 
I will be arguing for Article 5 Convention of States. Most of the people on TV and radio don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. And they wouldn't even waste their time. They'd rather talk about meatballs. Fine. We'll have a brand new radio channel. We'll call it the Food Radio Channel. Talk about meatballs, bologna sandwiches. They can talk about their last bowel movement, whatever they want. It's all about them. But when it comes to me, it's all about you. It's all about you. Look at the power we have. And that goes unused. The power we could use for good. And it goes unused. A guy was just elected to Congress from Arizona. This guy, Andy, what's his name? Biggs? Briggs? Was the president of the Senate in Arizona. He single-handedly prevented a vote on a resolution for Article 5 in the state Senate, and they promote him to Congress. He's even backed by our friends, uh, I forget, one of these conservative groups in Washington. They're pouring money into this guy. He's a conservative. No, he's not. He's a clown. Now he'll be in Congress and he'll be a clown. And we look forward to uh, Governor Abbott's leadership in Texas. Because this is what it's going to take in the end. We can keep listening to these guys on Fox who go on and on and who are wrong and wrong. Yes. Let's take some calls. Uh, let's go to Frank. Mountain Home. What is it? Where are you, Frank? Frank? Uh, <laughs> I'm Frank. You're, uh... Now, where, where are you, Frank? I know who you are. Mountain, Mountain Home, Arkansas. 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 Kansas, really. Yes, sir. Go right yeah, ahead, my one, friend. I, wanna, uh, I just want to uh, thank you and, and uh, thank God Almighty for a, uh, a wonderful turnout on Tuesday. Uh, listening to you last night on uh, Trump's uh, economic plan was absolutely spot on. Mm-hmm. Mark, I haven't supported the party since Reagan. I've been uh, just kind since of... Who? Uh, since who? Freelancing, you know, been voting uh, Ron Paul, uh, Jeff Baldwin, but but uh, I felt so compelled to cast my vote for Trump this time, and I did. But uh, I got on the phone this morning, talked to uh, uh, Rick Crawford, my rep out here, and and literally begged him to get rid of Paul Ryan. Talked to uh, John Bozeman and Tom Cotton, and and begged him, pleaded with them to uh, to get rid of Mitch McConnell and. Uh, I truly, truly believe if we as a as a body contact our reps, our senators, and tell them to get their their butts in gear and let's let's take back this country. Amen. And, now, uh, now I assume you you expect Trump running on these issues to win the Republican primary in the presidential election. And the Republicans in Congress, House and Senate, now you expect them to step up and do what they said, don't you? Well, you, you would think. You would think when, when uh, 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 Mark, I'm, I'm a simple man, and when somebody puts their hand on the Bible and swears to uphold the Constitution, man, brother, I take that as serious as I draw a breath. And, uh, and we allow these folks to, to, to go to Washington, to go to Little Rock, to go to, uh, you know, right here in good old Mountain Home, and they just... They give you all these excuses why they can't do that. And uh, what, what do you think about Gingrich now saying the Trump message about Mexico building, paying for the wall was a good campaign device, quote unquote? What do you think of that, Mark? I'll be honest with you. I'm not. Uh, a th- real... These guys, these guys, better not start walking backwards. I'm going to tell you that right now. Now I know they have their groupies out there. I'm not a member of the groupie. I'm not part of the groupies. Mark Newt, in my opinion, is uh, you know he's gifted with his uh, with his gab, but I think he's part of the problem, in my humble opinion. Uh, I, I I just 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 get rid of the whole lot of them in my in uh, and let, let's come January twentieth, we we got a fresh new page, and uh, I say we uh, we we start fresh. We don't listen to any of the Carl Roves or the or the Newts or anybody else. Let's just. Bring in fresh blood, and let's uh, let's do this correct. Why do you think 
you're a very, very bright man. Why, why do you think that the same people can, who are insiders and then they pretend to be outsiders and then they want to be insiders again, they're all over media, they're all over the, the Chris Christie transition team. And so why, why do you think this just continues like this? I, I don't know. Uh, it, uh, Mark, what the hell? We can't get rid of these people? There's nobody else out there who can do any of this? It, it's an addiction. These folks, it's, they're addicted to the power, to the corruption, and, 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 and they're not going to give it up. They're just not going to give it up. They have, they're, they're bought and paid for by the banksters, by the, by the, uh, uh, all the, all the, uh, the, 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 the trilateralists, the, uh, the, the one worlders, they're all bought and paid for, man. And come January 20th, I hope to God that we, the people, can bring in new blood, uh, fresh blood, people who, truly understand where we are we're I mean we're tilting in a very precarious position here and uh if we don't get the right people in there man this thing could go to hell in a handbasket and the republicans won't you got you got to keep an eye on these first few months and these these personnel decisions because these personnel decisions so I'm quite serious about this will determine the future of the executive branch the future of this presidency these personnel decisions are absolutely crucial all right, my friend, I really appreciate your call. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Arming yourself with a firearm isn't just a responsibility. Obviously, it's your right. We have what's called the Second Amendment. It's at least safe for now. now I take this right very seriously. That's why I'm a member of the United States Concealed Carry Association. They're dedicated to protecting responsible gun owners. Now, I know you take your gun rights seriously, too, which is why I want to let you on, on in on something that's really quite big, very cool. The USCCA wants to give you $1,600, and you can use that to buy one of five elite guns. I'm talking about high-quality pistols some of us only dream of owning, like the Sig Sauer 1911 the 1911 Spartan, and the Smith & Wesson M&P R8. But that's only two of them. Head over to DefendThem.com, DefendThem.com, to see the entire list and pick out which elite gun you'll add to your collection. I want 95 runner-ups. We'll each win a USCCA range bag complete with eye and ear protection. That's 100 winners total. I don't think I've ever seen better odds than that. So go get your free entry, your free entry by visiting DefendThem.com. That's DefendThem.com. Well, you could take home one of five elite guns if you win the $1,600. It's free. Just give it a try. DefendThem.com. Remember, my comments are all meant to be helpful because I've been through this. Because I was involved in this. These are words to the wise. Which will help this administration. Because there will be every effort possible. Every effort possible. To control and defeat this administration. Both within the Republican establishment. The Republican leadership on Capitol Hill. Uh, the media and so forth and so on. Let's take a call. Ben, Grand Junction, Colorado, the great KNZZ. Go. Hello, Mark. Hello, Ben. Yes, how may I help you? Mark, good to talk to you again. I talked to you a few weeks ago. Uh, Let me put you on hold for two seconds. I just saw that Mike Rogers, a former congressman and a frequent commentator on this network, is helping the Trump transition team. I think Mike Rogers is a great broadcaster. When it comes to politics and governing, he's a rhino. Where are all the conservatives here? I I'm serious, ladies and gentlemen. Where are the conservatives? Are they being shoved aside? Are they not going to be brought into this transition? Which conservatives will be cabinet secretaries? Which ones? 
81 percent of conservatives, 81 percent of conservatives voted for Donald Trump. The conservative base brought the Republican House. The conservative base brought the Republican Senate. The conservative base brought the Republican presidency. Where are the conservatives going to be in this administration? Rudy Giuliani? Chris Christie? Where are they? Go ahead, Ben. Good point, Mark. Good point. Um, I wanted to follow up with you, non-traditional college student. A lot of down faces today. A lot of uh, blue hair, purple hair, down faces. And I'm walking with the spring in my step and a whistle <laughs> on my lips. Yes. <laughs> Um, I actually cited you in a speech I gave, cited plunder and deceit, uh -oh. um, and after class, I was able to have a talk with five of my much younger classmates, um, and uh, I hate to blow my own horn here, but it looks like we have about five more, you know, constitutional conservatives on the books. Wow. Um, it was a persuasive speech, the one I had to give, uh, and... I ended it up by actually telling these, these kids who are much younger than me, you know, the one thing that unites us and binds us together, the one thing that doesn't see our race, our color, I, our I've got to go. Race. Don't hang up, Ben. I'm, I'm curious about your speech and how you influenced five younger people. So don't hang up. I'm going to carry over, which is unusual, top of the hour, but, but it's quite worth it, I think. We'll be right back. Here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, everybody. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. I want to get back to Ben in a moment, uh, who gave a speech in his college class and feels that it influenced several of his fellow students. And I want to know why. I want to know what he said, because we can learn from that, I believe. Progressive groups vow to obstruct, delay, and halt Donald Trump's agenda. Washington Times, oh, isn't this stunningly shocking to you? Despite bipartisan calls for healing and unity after a brutal presidential commitment, is that what you saw on the streets in many of our major cities as this group ACT UP and other left-wing kook organizations, other Marxist-type affiliated organizations were out in the streets? Rowling. In other words, the mob, the Hira mob. Just like the commies, just like the Reds. They're upset that Trump's president. Well, we just had an election, so what are we supposed to do? Demand that he that he not be president, that we install Hillary Clinton? These people are stupid. And worse, despite bipartisan calls for healing and unity after a brutal presidential campaign. Liberal activist groups, they're not liberal activist groups, they're radical hate groups, vowed to fight from the get-go to stop President-elect Donald Trump's agenda. And so you have people like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, or quasi-people, and Nancy Pelosi. They represent these people. And you know damn well that they're going to try and sabotage Trump every step of the way. So here's the challenge for Trump and his little brain trust of about three or four. Here, here's his challenge. He's going to face a problem with the radical left as institutionalized in the Democrat Party. And he's going to face a problem with the Republican Whigs, who really don't want to rock the boat too much. They'll perform, you know, they'll throw a bone here and there, and they'll pretend they're doing something effective. But they're not going to take a, an axe to the bureaucracy. They don't want to eliminate anything. Right now, they're trying to populate the Trump administration with their own people. And Trump seems to be receptive to this. Just, just remember this. Trump has 
progressive tendencies. That's what he's been his entire life. Now, that said, he campaigned, certainly in the waning days of the campaign, as a conservative for the most part. It's going to be decision time soon. It's going to be decision time soon. So he's going to need people around him who are principal conservatives and will, you know, prod, persuade, yank a little bit here and there to keep him in that in that conservative mode. So that's going to be important. You're not going to get that from McConnell. So you've got two forces going on here. You've got the radical left, which will have as its goal to sabotage anything Trump wants to do. And then you'll have the, uh, the Republican Whigs. So the great concern has to be that he not become Richard Nixon. I'm not saying he will. I'm just saying I'm not a groupie. You know who the groupies are. He could become Richard Nixon and they'd still cheer him on and attack everybody else. That's not here, that's not me, that's not you. So, this administration will be either successful or not based on what happens in the next few months. And so we're going to keep an eye on this. We're going to keep the pressure on, just as we did during the course of the campaign. We're not surrendering our principles. This is about the country. It's about your family. It always has and it always will be. And we want Donald Trump to succeed. We want him to become the most spectacular president history has ever known. That's what we want. I know who these people are. The fact that Krispy Kreme Christie is center stage concerns me enormously. He is a failed governor. He's a failed governor. He's all over the Today Show. He's all over Fox. He's all over everywhere. The Trump transition team leader. And I have it on very good news that he's trying to stuff Bushies and Romney types <clears throat> and types of people from Capitol Hill who we've talked about in different slots like Mike Rogers, among others. I have no, I have no personal uh, animus towards uh, Mike Rogers. Like I say, he's an employee of, uh, of this network, I think. But apparently he's coming into the transition team. This guy despised the conservatives in Congress. Despised them. And many said that he was uh, very unhelpful with the Benghazi investigations. So then why is he coming into the transition team to advise? Why isn't he keeping his radio job? I, I mean, I don't know. So Christie's going to have a lot of influence over who's going to be in the cabinet. now. I mean, this is really... Astonishing to me. Rich Priebus has an enormous amount of influence. The little Napoleon. Astonishing to me. Jeff Sessions should be Attorney General. No question about it. And quite frankly, Trump owes him big time. But that's not why. Because he's hugely qualified to be Attorney General. He's not qualified to be Secretary of State. Not that he would. He's not qualified to be in any position when it comes to commerce or the economy. He's got his ideology, but he's never really done any of that. But he is a top-notch former prosecutor. That I know because I saw it with my own two eyes when he was the uh, U.S. Attorney for Alabama when I was Chief of Staff to the Attorney General, Ed Meese. So these, these left-wing radical groups... They're sending a message to their Democrats in Congress. You better stop this guy. Democracy for America. One of these leading left-wing crackpot groups called for a progressive political revolution. That's why I started the program explaining the forces that are in play. That they're very aggressive in the executive branch. That they do not want to surrender the bureaucracy. And now that the bureaucracy is under the control of the bureaucracy of the Republicans and Trump, they need to do something about it. A progressive political rev revolution, quote-unquote, to stymie what is described as Trump's racist and sexist agenda. So let's be absolutely clear. Democracy for America will do everything in our power to obstruct, delay, and halt the attacks on people of color, women, and working families that will emerge from a Trump administration. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Producer. 
I have olive skin. Am I a person of color or am I Caucasian? I'd like to think I'm a person of color. I mean, I have olive skin. I mean, what does that mean exactly? A person of no color? Well, I don't think they're people of no color. Notice how pervasive the racism is on the left. From the White House to all these other houses. Just blatant, open racism. The hatred is dripping. In a country that is more beneficent, freer than any other country on the face of the earth, still. There, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, and I mean it. There is no systemic racism in this country. Oh, what did he say? You're damn right I said it, because it's true. There is no, let me say it again. There is no systemic racism in America. Period. I'm not even a, a failed football player, and I get that. No, there isn't. You just don't understand. Oh, no, I understand everything. There is no systemic racism in America. There is no systemic sexism in America. What? That's correct. Do you live where I live? No, I live in my own house. But there's still no sexism in America, systemic sexism. If there's systemic sexism, then there is a system in place that promotes sexism. There's a system in place. It's systemic, right? That promotes racism. Where is this system? Where's the office? Who's in charge of it? Where's the CEO? It's all BS. Ben, let's go back to Ben in Grand Junction, Colorado. Yes, Ben, tell us about your speech quickly. Mark, I had my mental bookmark right there. Um, what I had said to influence these kids was um, that, you know, it doesn't matter who you vote for. It matters what you vote for. The one thing that unites us and binds us all as Americans, as black, white, purple, green, religion, race, creed, is the is the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. It's the one thing that will never let you down. Keep it in the front of your mind every time you go into the voting booth. Will this candidate support the Constitution and my individual liberty over the federal government? That is Now, now is. let me ask you a question, Ben, because that is beautiful. And where do we get this Constitution for? Why do we have these principles of separate, divided power, specific rights in these different branches, a Bill of Rights, um, state sovereignty? Why did the framers do all these things? Well, Mark, I think it's well, when the framers decided to actually, you know, I mean, there was a contention between the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists that you know, any, any, any power is not given to the government is re reserved to the states and the individuals. And then the anti-federalists were saying, if I'm... But, I mean, who are they trying to protect? Well, the individual, and the individual... Stop. Exactly. Yes. To protect the individual. Now, let's go on, because you're really sharp. Why, why were they... Hold on now. Why were they trying to protect the individual? So no one person could gain power over everybody else. You know, that's why we have a system of checks and balances as well. You know, I mean, it's uh, I'm, I'm not a political studies major at all. I'm a construction management studies major. But, you know, your influence on, on my way of thinking has definitely helped me to persuade these other five individuals. And, and you're doing great, and you did great. Isn't it true that the reason the individual is so important... It's because each and every one of us is God's creature, and each and every one of us have our own circle of liberty around us, and each and every one of us have unique personalities and interests and so forth. And when you defend and protect the individual, you're defending and protecting the collection of individuals too. From, tyr from tyranny, from man-made earthly tyranny. And if you do not respect the individual as a creature of God, if you do not expect the individual 
as having unalienable rights. Then you have communism. Then you have fascism. Then you have democratic socialism. Then you have Fabian socialism. Then you have progressivism, don't you? Yes, everything for the state, nothing for the individual. Exactly. The individual exists to serve the state. Now, they can wrap it up in their propaganda. Oh, we need health care for all the people. But what they do is social engineer. They want to change the individual. They want to change your independence, your free will. So we are a collective. And notice this, too, Ben. Who's in charge of this collective? Well, I'd like to say, you know, it's definitely the progressive liberal agenda that's trying to indoctrinate, you know, the individual into being just a bunch of automatons that, that serve the state in the end, you know. Precisely. Now, hold on. So now we have a new president who's going to have a new cabinet. This is the threat to the individual in this country right now. Is it not this massive administrative state that pushes out thousands and thousands of regulations a year? Is that not the greatest threat we, fra- the threat we face domestically? Yes, it is. So then is it not crucially important that the right people be put in these various positions and be given the job to cut back, to slash, and in some cases even eliminate what they're supposed to be in charge of? You know, Trump is going to have to be very, very particular with his selections for his cabinet and his staff. Otherwise, he's going to flip the script, and we're going to be in the same boat that we were in for the last eight years. I really, really have faith that that's not going to happen. Um, I hope that's, you know, I mean, this is another opportunity for hope for everyone again. You know, it's it's, it's, it's fun to see it. I, I, mean, I like hope, but I think we need to have pressure. Pressure, yes, pressure indeed. Can you, can you, to... why is Chris Christie in charge of the transition team when Chris Christie doesn't understand and comprehend or believe in anything we just discussed? You know, it's, it's, it, that's a head scratcher for me as well. You know, I, I would like to see, you know, either Gowdy or Jeff Sessions as Attorney General. Um, I would love to see, a cruise appointment to the Supreme Court. That would that would be uh, oh that would just be well. I would assume awesome. Cruz wants it, or Mike Lee. That would assume he wants it, but they would be you know absolutely uh, perfect. But uh, you know it's it's um you know like I said it's 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 just it's it's encouraging to me and it reinvigorates my faith in in the younger kids who are in my class to to see them to see them get keyed in on that you know like because you are exposing them to something they've probably never heard before aren't you well yes and that credit is also due to you sir and i thank you for that and uh you know i'll I'll let you go but but if you ever do find yourself out in out in western colorado here you know my family and i we have dinner with you every night (laughs) well i I, uh, ben Ben, i gotta go i want to thank you you're you're very very uh Good guy. Uh, I haven't been. I haven't found myself in Western Colorado yet, so no offense. But I would love to do it one day. You take care of yourself and good job. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Let's see who we have here. Leah, Montgomery, Alabama, the great WLWI. Go. Yes, sir. Hi. I just wanted to um, make a quick point that it's great that we have a victory. We have a straight flush. Um, I would encourage everybody, give yourselves five minutes to revel in the victory, but then it's time to get to work. We do have Mr. Trump for four years, but the midterm elections will come around in two years. That will be a very quick, those two years will go by so fast. We only are guaranteed the House and the Senate for those two years. I was hoping you could encourage your listeners to call, to write, to email the senators, the representatives to get to work immediately 
because those two years will go by. Well, what do you think now. I've done the last few days? Have, uh, the groupies are out there, you know, slobbering all over themselves, looking for invites for dinner and so forth and so on. I discussed this at length yesterday. I've discussed it for 90 minutes today, what needs to be done. I can't turn everything into call your senators, call your congressmen, and so forth and so on, because people get sick of hearing that, particularly after an election. But your point is absolutely right on. The window is very tight. It's very tight. And it's even well before the two years. These appointments are going to determine the future of this administration. I'm telling you, I know this is a fact. Thank you for your call. I appreciate it. We'll be right back. The Octagon of Talk Radio, The Mike Levin Show. Call in now at 877 381 3811. All right. Right now, I'm concerned for the good people out there that have IRS debt. Every election cycle, the IRS gets more aggressive with collections. And they don't care whose life they'll ruin. They can garnish your wages and even recommend you be criminally prosecuted. But did you know the IRS has up to 10 years, 10 years to track you down? Stop hiding from the IRS. Stop putting yourself and your family at risk. Stop stressing and having sleepless nights. Call my good friends at Optima Tax Relief. They're the experts. They're the professionals. 800-499-6300. 800-499-6300. Optima can stop the demand letters, stop the aggressive collection actions, and stop the IRS from targeting you. You can speak with an Optima tax relief expert about the Fresh Start initiative, arguably the best break the IRS has ever offered. This is your chance, your chance to perhaps save thousands, even tens of thousands. Nobody knows it better than Optima Tax Relief. They're A-plus rated with a better business bureau. It doesn't get any better. And they've helped thousands of folks save millions of dollars. Call for your free consultation. Ask about their one-of-a-kind guarantee. One-of-a-kind guarantee. Call 800-499-6300. 800-499-6300. That's 800-499-6300. Well, uh, my computer has frozen, uh, Mr. Producer, so let me have a good caller, would you please? West Chester, New York, the great WABC, William, go! Hey, Mark. I think I have a way for Trump to get rid of obstructionist bureaucrats. Back when I was in the Navy, in OCS, one of our guys got orders to ADAC Alaska. He cried for three days, one of the worst possible places he could have been sent. How about having ADACs domestically overseas for every single federal agency, and anybody who obstructs will get PCS, that is permanent change of station orders, go to that place, go to that, call it, just call it generically ADAC, hot or cold anywhere. If you don't like it, resign, and don't replace Yeah, well, that, that, uh, that's not going to happen. It sounds like fun, but ain't going to happen. All right, give me another call, please. Ivan the Great, WMAL, and Ivan the Great, Laurel, Maryland, how are you, sir? Sometimes it's Ivan the Terrible, Mark. It depends. Very, hey, li very. Listen, Mark, I have to say this. On behalf of the United States of America, thank you. Well, Mark, thank people, you. I, don't I don't think people understand the enormity of if Hillary P Clinton had won had, and had taken her pen and her phone and granted uh, amnesty and the right to vote to you know how many, however many millions of illegals, we would never. We might never have won another election. Never. Mm -hmm. I mean, this right. was this was critical, Mark. And and they talk about the the white male and the white male without a degree. Trump won that vote. But you know, even Fox News. All right, slow down a second. Call. Slow down a second. Trump got forty five percent of whites with college degrees, and Hillary Clinton got forty nine percent. This has been a lie that's been going on before, during, and now after the election. Even if it matters, which it doesn't, if this is their game, awful lot of people with college degrees voted for Donald Trump. Just, I just wanted to make that clear to the audience. Go right ahead. Do you, Mark, do you, do you think they would ever say that Hillary won the black vote of, the, of males without a high school diploma? Do you think they would ever say that? Yeah, you, you know what's interesting, Ivan? And 
you being a black man, me being a white man, you know what's interesting about that? They never will. They would never say Hillary won most of the black uh, non-college vote. They don't even they don't even count that category. I would never say that, Mark, in a million years. Hey, Mark, listen, this to me, this was the revenge of Joe the Plumber vote. This was the, the second Tea Party. This was the people, the taxpayer, Tea is a taxpayer, the taxpayer revolt, the backbone of America, you know, the coal miners, the ones that work and the ones that make a work, America work, the ones that foot the bill, stood up and said, "We enough. We don't want this anymore. You, you take our money to give to illegal aliens for health care, welfare, food stamps. Ninety-four million people, Americans are not working. And who, who do you think, and, and most of them get a check. And who do you think pays for that check? It's the taxpayer. And the taxpayer said, it's enough. We, we, we don't want any more of that. We don't mm-hmm. want any more of this liberal, liberal nonsense. That's right. you know, this, this election was about the American taxpayer saying that we demand a course correction. Mark, I disagree with you on one, one thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, you might come come around my way, but for Attorney General, I would put Ken Cuccinelli in there. And oh, Alan he'd West, be great. Hey, uh, hey, that'd be great. And Alan West is Secretary of Defense. And I, I would I love that. Thing, I got one yes, last sir. thing to say is that I got a cautionary tale for, you know, for those who, who believe in WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks' mission was to destroy both parties. So if we think that they they they're I'm democratic. no fan of WikiLeaks or this Assange guy. I'm not again. I I think uh, what he did was stole private information. He committed crimes. On the other hand, when this information's ubiquitous, I'm not going to pretend it doesn't exist because you know I, I'm not going to uh, you know give credit to uh, to somebody who did it. No, there's information there. I'm going to use it. Just like when the newspapers get information in untoward ways and splash it across their headlines about our secrets and so forth, and it's all over the world. We're going to talk about it and, uh, and try and figure out what to do about it. Ivan, thank you for your call, my friend. He had a great idea. Alan West for Secretary of Defense. Alan West was not congressman for very long. He really is an outsider. This is the sort of thing I'm talking about. Ken Cuccinelli for Attorney General. I can go with Sessions. I can go with Cuccinelli. And Cuccinelli was a great attorney general in Virginia. Ivan's really thinking the way that we all need to think, I think. Jim, Brooklyn, New York, the great WABC, go. Good evening, Mark. How are you? I'm all right, my friend. How are you? Great, great. Um, I'm calling just to say I agree with your earlier comment. Uh, You had mentioned um, how could uh, Trump even consider appointing uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, to Attorney General's office. No, I didn't say how can he even consider. I said he shouldn't. He shouldn't. Well, even sure. Uh, he can make him Department of Homeland Security, maybe, unless what you tell me is accurate when I see what your comments are. Go ahead. My point was when I live in New York, he's, he made New York City a sanctuary city for eight years. Is that right? Exactly opposite of Trump's policy of ending sanctuary cities throughout the United well, States. Well, if that is true... And, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in New York who will, who will say whether it is or isn't. If that is true, Jim, what's he been doing on TV all over the place, talking about Trump's uh, positions? And how is it that all the people interviewing him does, don't even bring it up? You see what I mean? Yeah, but I'll, I'll, I will guarantee that because I heard it so many times coming from him uh, throughout his two administrations. Unbelievable. Not to, say, not to say that I didn't support him for what he did here in New York. Exactly. He was great for cleaning yes, up. He was a great mayor. What not? But that has nothing to do with being attorney general and trying to enforce Trump's will of no sanctuary cities. Completely different. Well, that's going to be up to Trump, isn't it? That's I, true. Uh, you know, he, I wonder if anybody on Fox will ask Giuliani. I mean, uh, Giuliani's on Fox all the time. He must be sitting in the green room eating all the donuts in there. I, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for somebody from Fox to ask him that question. Oh, Especially, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Bill O'Reilly, the 8 p.m., or he'll be right on top of it. Yeah, I hope so. But I, I, I consider since since Fox is such such a big Trump network, I, I just don't see anybody asking him that type of question. I think it'll it'll. Well, be- let's put the challenge out there. Maybe somebody on the five that gives us five chances. Uh maybe the new guy coming at 7 p.m. Tucker Carlson, but he was pretty much a pom-pom guy. I don't know. 
We'll see. That's a very good question for Rudy Giuliani. Why did you support sanctuary city status for New York City if, in fact, you did? All right, Jim, good call. Thank you. Richard, Lakeland, Florida, the Mark Levin app. How are you? Good evening, Mark. Um, Trump, given Mitch McConnell's DOA on term limits, has got to just go to the public and start being a major advocate for Article 5 constitutional convention by saying, hey, these guys, in the words of Governor LePetamain talking to Hedley Lamar, we've got to save our phony flo- uh-huh. baloney jobs. You know, he's going to say Congress is never going to vote for term limits. We need to have a constitutional convention, get term limits, and, and repeal Article, you know, uh, Amendment 17, put the senators back, or the, what I call the House of Lords, back to the being but, appointed. But the term elections. limits, but the, the, you don't even need to reverse the 17th Amendment, which I support, obviously, but that's, a, that's probably the toughest of my 11 reform amendments. But term limits, you don't even need that. Term yeah. limits is a separate issue. And for Mitch McConnell to say, well, we're not going to do that. You know, you're right. Is there going to be any pushback? Oh, is there going to be any pushback on McConnell on an issue that is uh, really strongly supported by the American people? No. Did you hear any pushback? No. And, and you know, I, I did a quick calculation. Trump carried 30 versus 20 states, 60 percent of the states with an average margin of 5 percent. Of, of a vote tally between him and Clinton. And so he's he's very close to that threshold, and with the additional legislatures that are in the hands of the Republicans, if he went out up front to the American people and said, listen, Congress won't do it. The only way... Uh, he's not going to do it. Yeah. He's not going to do it. And I want to be very, very clear about this, Richard. This isn't about a president doing anything. We cannot rely on federal... Officials, I don't care if they're outsiders or inside. This is a people thing. That's why it is a grassroots thing. So when you keep saying, if Trump will do this, if Trump will do that, he's not going to do it. If we will do this, you are in Lakeland, Florida. You need to get involved in that movement. Are you involved in that movement? Yes, I, yeah, I mean, in fact, I, I joined the Well, then you need stage. to focus on... The state legislature in Florida has the state legislature passed it. I believe they have. I believe that. I believe Florida has signed up for joining the convention of states. Okay. Now, there's really nothing else that you can do other than encourage other friends and family in other states to do the same thing. And there's an organization led by my buddy Mark Meckler. This is all they do, all day and night long, and they had literally have hundreds of thousands of grassroots uh, members. We're involved in this. But Trump, I mean, you know full well he's not going to do it. Heritage Foundation, and I, I do want to before we... Heritage Foundation call. doesn't want to back it. Well, that's their problem. Uh, in I, fact, do you know of any think tank in Washington, D.C. that wants to back it? Uh, I don't care whether they want no, to back it or not. No, because there are think tanks in Washington, D.C. I do want to thank you for educating me on the 14th Amendment about a year and a half ago, because... When I'd read it, I did not know the context of that amendment, and you really, you and the constitutional uh, professor that did the treatise on it, thank you very much. You opened my eyes on that. All right, Richard. God bless you. Take care of yourself. All right, folks. There's certain things we have to do. You can't say, oh, if Trump will this, Trump. No, we have to do the Article 5 Convention of States. Pressure your state houses and your state senators. That's our obligation. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. The media just called Arizona for uh, Trump. What are they, two days late? I think we called it the next day, the night of, something to that effect. You know, folks, Thanksgiving is around the corner. If you want to look 10 or 15 years younger around the dinner table, pick up the phone right now. Order SOTIC XV. The results are brilliant, and they're really quick. Here's Donna from Kingsville, Maryland. I love Chamonix products. They absorb nicely without residue, and I look at least 10 years younger than women my age. SOTIC XV is better than anything you can find in department stores. Why? Plant stem cells. 
natural peptides, flower extracts, amazing ingredients, and a proprietary base delivery system that guarantees quick, clean absorption for maximum results. Simply brilliant, effective, and fast. Call 800-SKIN-604 to try Esotic XV for yourself. You'll feel the difference, and you'll see the results very quickly, or your money back, no questions asked. Call now, and for the first time, you'll get Genesel for bags and puffiness free with your order. Best off for the year, try Esotique XV, risk-free today. Get Genesel as your gift. Call 800-SKIN-604, 800-SKIN-604. Now, the Giuliani position on sanctuary cities. Romney accused him of supporting sanctuary cities, and the truth is, in the 90s, Giuliani was a rabid defender of illegal immigration. Seems to have evolved somewhat. What he said was he inherited the sanctuary city policy. Uh, But he reissued it and embraced it. So he inherited the sanctuary city policy left over from Koch five years before. And then when he became mayor in 1994, January, he, uh, he reissued it. And then a few months later, he uh, had a press conference, and he decried anti-illegal immigration policies as unfair and hostile and went into all that. So that's 20 years ago. And there's no information that he reversed course while mayor. So, yes, he supported and ran a sanctuary city. Just saying. Um, Just pointing that out. Kate, Canton, Michigan, on the Mark Levin app. How are you? Thank you so much. I can't believe I got through. But I'm saying the person that we need right now is Carly Fiorina. Mm -hmm. She's an outsider. She's a business person. And if you want to take down a bureaucracy without crashing it, you need somebody that could take an organization. You know what? That is a great idea. She would be great at the Treasury Department, don't you think, given her business background or something like that? I'm not talking about treasury. We were talking about organizational development, how you deal with organizations. All right, there is no organizational development operation. Well, unless you put her the head of office of management and budget. No, I'm talking about there is a way to take an organization, whether it's a department, whether it's the treasury department, whether it's, uh, you know, I, I know, but we're, these, we're, this is an academic, and it's not, it's not abstract. You have to have somebody actually running something. Right. That's what you do. You have to appoint people to positions. They have departments and agencies. They can be advisors, I suppose. But um, So what are you suggesting? I'm talking about, you know, we had Bill Bennett. He was the drug czar. We need a czar. We need somebody that is in some very high level. Well, that would be OMB, Office of Management and Budget. That's what they do. Maybe I don't know where it fits, but we need somebody that's a czar that knows how to deconstruct and take down these organizations. All right, we got it. All right, Kate, I appreciate your call. I got it. They can't just be roaming around the West Wing. If they don't have any actual, you know, significant role without, you know, giving advice and so forth, they'll get swallowed up. So I think OMB is a great idea, actually. Or Treasury. I think she'd be great, Fiorina. Let's slip in another, shall we? KC Pullman, Washington. Quickly go, please. Hey, Mark. Hey, just want to shout out a great hello and thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank just, just mirroring one of the other callers. Uh, I just want to let you know I've been in law enforcement for 25 years. And... Uh, I was raised in a Democratic family, always voted uh, Democrat, uh, basically just because that's the way it was always done, and I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. And I voted for Obama both times, and oh. it, was a miser- it was an absolute miserable failure. And, um, I mean, Tuesday night was like one of the happiest days of my life. Well, my well, Casey, welcome to the side of liberty, my friend. We'll be right back. He's here. 
now broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, everybody. Mark Levin here. This is Hour 3. You'll get more honesty and integrity on this program than anywhere else. I'm not positioning myself. I'm not promoting myself. I'm not self-aggrandizing. We'll leave that to the others. We'll leave it to the others. Trump, after the meeting with Obama today. Quote, uh, cut one, go. We discussed a lot of different situations, some wonderful and some difficulties. Um, I very much look forward to dealing with the president in the future, including counsel. Jeez, I hope not. <laughs> Paul Ryan, after meeting with Trump today, been very busy. Cut two, go. We had a fantastic, productive meeting about getting to work, rolling up our sleeves, and going to work for the American people. Uh, Donald Trump had one of the most impressive victories we've ever seen, and we're going to turn that victory into progress for the American people, and we are now talking about how we're going to hit the ground running to make sure that we can get this country turned around and make America great again. Mm -hmm. We'll be watching. I do believe we will be watching. Let's see here. Josh Ernest. Can't wait till he's gone. Little puke. Probably wind up senior vice president for communications at, you know, Exxon Mobil or something like that. They always wind up uh, making a fortune. Like that guy, Joe Lockhart. You know, he's become a multi, multi millionaire. It's incredible. Josh Ernest at the White House briefing yesterday. CNS News. Cut three. Go. The second thing is the results of the election are not even 12 hours old. Uh, and I think it is far too early, at least for me, uh, to discern exactly what message the voters were trying to send last night. Well, let me help you, uh, Dimwit, and your 14 IQ. The message voters were sending is they despise you in particular, your boss and your policies, which have unleashed havoc across the country, turned over people's lives when it comes to health care and so many other things. Okay, you clear on that now, genius? Now, Barbara Boxer, I'm thrilled she'll be gone, but she's replaced with a, uh, a radical kook left-wing nut job um, who, uh, who won very easily in California. Imagine that. On the Chelsea Handler show, on Netflix, I heard Netflix is like $5 billion in the hole. Maybe it's because they have shows like the Chelsea Handler show. Cut four, go. Remember, Hillary got more votes than Donald Trump. Do you understand what that means? Uh, more, yes. <laughs> the, and I <laughs> take some solace in this as I pick myself up off the floor. To know that more people said... Pick yourself up off the floor? Mm-hmm. What are you doing on the floor, by the way? Like Harry Reid? Uh, you just kind of fall on the floor? Yes, I picked myself up. And she got more votes than, uh, than Donald Trump. Go ahead. This, this is a woman who doesn't care about the, the, uh, the, the democratic process under our Constitution. Go ahead. Together that more people said we work better when we embrace each other and help each other, care about... Oh, our... liberals always say, so let's help each other and embrace each other. Except when you vote for somebody they don't like, then you're a racist and a sexist. Don't give us this come-together crap. You don't believe in that for a minute. And I would encourage the Trump people in the uh, White House eventually to understand. These are your enemies. And they'll chew you up and spit you out if you're not keeping your eyes wide open. They want you to fail. They'll cut your throats if they can. Go ahead. Then tear each other apart. But the electoral college system is a bad system. It was set up so long ago. I Go wish ahead, we could change it. Go ahead by white slave owners. Let, let me tell you something. 
The electoral college system is a bad system, she says. Let me ask you a question. If the electoral college system is a bad system because it doesn't reflect the popular vote, that's what she's saying. Why do we have senators? Two from each state? Well, then that doesn't make sense, does it, ladies and gentlemen? Follow me with this. this these are the left-wing kooks. This idiot has been a senator forever. Same with the other idiot from California, Diane Frankenfeinstein. And I have affectionately called Barbara Boxer the dwarf senator. All three feet, two inches. It was either running for the Senate or being in Barnum and Bailey. So she picked the Senate. Now, here's the thing. If her argument is that we want pure, popular vote to determine who our representatives are, there need not be a United States Senate. We have what's called, Barbara, the United States House of Representatives. And that is more of a pure, popular vote body than any other body we have. There's no point to having the Senate then, two senators from every state. Get rid of it. And get rid of her. And get rid of Sanders. And get rid of it. Just have a parliamentary system of sorts. She's so stupid, she doesn't even understand that she's arguing against the position she's held in the U.S. Senate for decades. Let me repeat for the liberals out there. They're a little slow. Follow the bouncing ball, will you? If your argument is that the only legitimate outcome is the popular vote, then we don't need a Senate. Because two senators from each state is not reflective of the population. The reason we had two senators from each state, it was a compromise. So each state has effective representation in the United States Congress, and it was supposed to be the state legislatures, but okay, fine. Each state has representation in the Senate, two per state. And then the other body reflects the population of the country. So she's saying the Electoral College, what she wants to say is these white bastards, these slave-owning bastards, look what they did. Look what they did. Look what they created. They created what turned out to be the most magnificent country on the face of the earth. Aren't you sick and tired of people who run for these offices, serve in these offices, benefit from these offices, trashing our country? If they hate it so much, why aren't they doing it? Why isn't she a florist or something? Why, why does she have to do something like this? Or why isn't she a clown in the circus? Now, she's a clown in the Senate. She could be a clown in the circus. She's despicable. But the electoral college system is a bad system set up so long ago. Meanwhile, Chelsea Handler and all these other people who are supposed to leave the country. Of course she won't leave the country. What other country would accept morons like this with negative IQs and turn them into popular stars where they make tens of millions of dollars? Where, would, where else would Chelsea Handler, whoever the hell that is, I have my own culture, I stick in my own bubble, I don't know what's going on out there, but Chelsea Handler, where the hell else could she make two nickels? Nowhere. Nowhere that I know of. Then we have, uh, let's see, we have Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, the media is still intrigued with Arnold Schwarzenegger, even though he had sexual relations with his maid, and they have a child. And this occurred while he was married. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that to be putrid. Disgusting, unconscionable. But he's a progressive Republican. Oh, okay, well, I have, forget it. That's personal. And this genius, still speaking broken English, here's what he has to say about those of you who actually know something about climate science, quote unquote. Cut 11, go. We are told that fighting pollution costs yeah, yeah, yeah. They love to spend money. And you know something else? Ha, Some... I come at, stop. Yeah, how the hell did this guy get elected to anything? 
And what's with that weird music in the background? Go ahead. Politicians even want to shut down the EPA's ability to regulate carbon. I would like to strap their mouth to an exhaust pipe of a truck. Ah, you idiot. You washed up buffoon. Another one who uh, drove California into the toilet. I'd like to uh, strap their mouth to exhaust pipe. Let me educate you, moron. And I'll do it in regular English. Most of us learned this in third grade, but you weren't here. Maybe you didn't learn this. You see, this is how it works, Arnie. We have what's called carbon dioxide. You're talking about carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide begins with an M. Carbon dioxide begins with a D. Now, you know what, Arnie? If you don't have carbon dioxide, you know what happens? You don't have plants. All you vegetarians out there will starve to death. But you won't have plants. What do plants create? Yes, Jimmy. There's seven-year-old Jimmy. What do plants create? That's right. Oxygen. And who needs oxygen to live, Jimmy? Oh, that's correct. We do. We do. Now, carbon dioxide, ladies and gentlemen, carbon dioxide is, is a tiny little element in what we call the atmosphere. Now, part of the atmosphere is made up of what we call greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases are very, very important because greenhouse gases include things called like condensation. For the liberals out there, that's called water. And so we need condensation. We need carbon dioxide. We need things like that in order to survive as what? Human beings. And for you PETA types out there, Animals need it, too. Now, if we don't have greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide, and we don't have an atmosphere, we will what, Johnny? Right. Die. Perish. All of us. Now, if we have too much carbon dioxide, whatever that means, what happens? It gets a little warmer. Oh, my goodness. Then what? Then we have more plants. And when we have more plants, we have more food. And when we have more plants and food, that's a good thing. And when we have more plants, we have more oxygen. Now, maybe it can get too warm. Can human beings control that? Sally, you answer, no. Why, Sally? Because we have what's called, what's that yellow thing in the sky? It's called the sun. And the sun has more to do with warmth and cold on the earth than your Ford pickup. Can you believe that? It's true. Now let's listen to Arnie now that we've provided context for any third grader. Let's listen to Arnie again. Cut 11, go. We are told that fighting pollution means harsh regulations. For a politician in Washington to talk about too costly... Hey, dummy, stop there. Look at what politicians say. It's too costly to fix. Can't be fixed, dummy. That's number one. Number two, it's people who are affected by this. People who have businesses. People who have automobiles and trucks. People who use what we call air conditioning. (laughs) <laughs> and as a matter of fact, you fools in Beverly Hills, yes, it affects you too. Your private jets, your numerous homes, your numerous cars, yes, it affects you too. Go ahead. To spend money. And you know something else? Some politicians even want to shut down the EPA's ability to regulate carbon. I would like to strap their mouth to an exhaust. Let me tell you about carbon. As a matter of fact... Carbon wasn't regulated until a stupid Supreme Court decision, five to four, written by John Paul Stevens. No, not the pirate. He was an associate justice of the Supreme Court, appointed by Gerald Ford. 
and John Paul Stevens agreed with these liberal states that sued the EPA in Massachusetts versus the EPA. And you know what they did? For the first time in history, they said carbon dioxide is a pollutant because carbon dioxide has never been considered a pollutant by scientists. It can't be a pollutant. Plants use it to create oxygen. It's not a pollutant. But they just want to regulate it. Ho, 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 Go ahead. Truck, turn on the engine, and let's see how long you, you know what? Shut the- up, you idiot. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Discuss a little Rousseau. Little Rousseau, the body politic taken individually can be considered to be like a body that is organized, living and similar to that of a man. The sovereign power represents the head. The laws and customs are the brain, source of the nerves and seat of the understanding. The will and the senses of which the judges, uh, let's see, and magistrates are the organs. The commerce, industry, and agriculture are the mouth and stomach that prepare the common subsistence. The public finances are the blood that is discharged by a wise economy, performing the functions of the heart in order to distribute nourishment and life throughout the body politic. And it goes on. Why am I reading this? Because it turns out Woodrow Wilson lifted from that, as I have now discerned on my own. Woodrow Wilson did the same thing. The body politic is like a human body. Different organs. Why do we care? Why do we care about philosophy? Because philosophy undergirds politics. These are the voices, the minds of the people who control the country today, the progressives. Living and breathing constitution. Why do they call it a living and breathing constitution? Because of Rousseau, what I just read to you. And then later, Woodrow Wilson. You see, what they're trying to say is, forget about the individual. Who is living and breathing? Flesh and blood. Government needs to be treated like a body, the body politic. You can't be dividing rights and... States with sovereignty and everything, I mean, then the body will die. You see? It has to be one soul body living and breathing. You can't have divided powers like divided organs. Separation of organs? Come on, folks. No. Forget about the individual. Think about government as a human being. That's why I read that. That's what they think. I'll be right back. America's most powerful conservative voice, The Mark Levin Show. Dial in now, 877-381-3811. Well, a member of our magnificent audience, you are magnificent folks, sent us a YouTube link. Mr. Producer, you better run that through the system there. We're going to have to play it. Uh, If I don't play it, certainly the Liberal Democrats will. And uh, this is Rudy in 1996 on the issue. I'm sorry, don't get mad at me. It's out there. It's all over the place of New York City as sanctuary city. Go ahead. So now I'm the mayor of New York City, responsible for the health, safety, and welfare of the city. I look at that legislation and I say, no matter what President Clinton does or the Congress, we're going to have 400 to 450,000 people in the city of New York that I can't do anything about who are illegal and undocumented. And the question uh, becomes, what do you do about it? Since they are going to be here, and the federal government is doing nothing about it, and the city of New York doesn't have the capacity to do anything about it, even if it wanted to. I would do precisely what one of my predecessors did back in 1988, and that was Mayor uh, Koch, Mayor Ed Koch. That was reissued by my immediate predecessor, Mayor Dinkins, and reissued by me. He signed an executive order called Executive Order 124, 
That executive order protects illegal and undocumented immigrants in several respects from being reported to the Immigration and Naturalization Service. It basically says if they seek to use city services that are critical to their health and safety and critical to the health and safety of other people, then their names will not be turned into the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Well, there you have it. Don't be mad at me. That's not a uh, voiceover that we did. I'll tell you what amazes me about this, though. And again, uh, I kind of like Rudy Giuliani. I think I've met him once in my life. Yeah, it is once. kind of like the guy. But what amazes me, he's been on Fox endlessly for months and months and months and months, including on the 8 p.m. show who's out there leading a charge, he says, against sanctuary cities, and this never came up. Never came up. And I'm not into Rudy bashing, and I'm not going to go any further with this. I'm just saying, you know, people are saying he should be attorney general, and at the same time people voted for Trump because they're against sanctuary cities. He says he's against sanctuary cities. Unless Rudy had a serious change of heart, this needs to be known. He got another guy, this Chris Christie. He did nothing about illegal immigration. He's a gun grabber, even though he denies it. Uh, he was a, turns out, a terrible governor in many respects. And he's leading the transition team. You know, these, these, these Republican, <laughs> they're rhinos. I mean, truly. I just, I, I'm just t- telling you, just tipping you off, that's all. A few years back, I discovered this small, small home security company. Nobody knew about them. I could see they did everything right, and I championed them right here on this program. Today, they protect millions of Americans all over the country, including my family. Simply Safe Home Security. And I'm very pleased to announce the new Simply Safe security camera, designed by some of the best engineers in the business. Now, this camera, it's different. It's new. The Simply Safe security camera actually connects to the sensors in your alarm system. Now, that means any time your system detects something, it records it. Someone comes home, you get a recording. Someone tries to open a window, a recording. You can see everything that happens at your home. The really great part of this, say someone tries to break in. Not only is Simply Safe going to call the police, But they take the video, and then you can show it to the police. Give them evidence. I think these are going to be big, and they are. It's a big deal. Check out Simply Safe's new cameras today at simplysafemark.com. Check it out right away. Simplysafemark.com. That's simplysafemark.com. All right. Let's take some more calls. I think we will. Um, bum, 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 bum. David, in Washington State, on the Mark Levin app, go. Hey, Mark, uh, I just wanted to let you know, I, I caucused for Bernie Sanders in the primary um, and uh, had a bit of a, had a conservative conversion, um, voted for Donald Trump. In, wait, 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 uh, you had a general. conservative conversion in a few months? Yeah, yeah, and it's a pretty simple uh, explanation if you want to know. Uh, I read a macroeconomic history book and the Federalist Papers. Wow. And it made it, uh, you know, I, I just see a general trend of government uh, intervention leading to, uh, I mean, it, it, the, the strings attached are just worse than what they try to fix. And, and the Federalist Papers uh, describe it, just sell the Constitution for me as the best way to... Um, Defend against that and protect the. Do you, do you think, like you, the more people who actually read these basic things, the more they'll understand that liberty cannot coexist with this overpowering centralized government and all the pretend benefits they're giving everybody? I, I think if people were just willing to do the research, oh, a lot would change. Um, but they're too busy getting caught. With the uh, the rock caught up with the rockets, as, as you would say, um, it's just 
a ridiculous uh, media narrative being pushed there. You know, they're too busy. I, I'm just, I'm personally offended too by the the um, the liberal uh, media narrative right now that is trying to convince everybody um, that your vote has a, per, is attributed to little more than your gender or the color of your skin. Yeah, I know. It's amazing, and, isn't it? And it's another way that big government and their the, their PR firm is dividing us so that we're more easily uh, taken advantage of to pass some law that'll uh, take more money out of our pockets. Or when, when did you come to this view? Which month? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, it was. it's kind of like someone would say working through their salvation. I guess it's... Uh, uh, it, it, it's it's really just kind of been an, an enlightening process. A friend of mine, a long time Levinite through college out in Ohio, named Corey Clark. He uh, he recommended I read some history um, before I commit to this uh, socialist um, ideology. So and that's what I did. I'll tell you what. Can I send you two books? I'd like to send oh, that would you. Be amazing. Uh, don't hang up. I'd like to send you a Meritopia, and I'd like to send you Plunder and Deceit. Uh, I'm really, really impressed with how you, uh, with how you had your, uh, your progression. So thank you for calling. And let me tell you, the left, it's a very dark and bleak place over there. Anger and violence, everything they accuse us of. You come over to our side, you can actually be enlightened, be happy, see opportunity. You really don't see people through uh, through race and all the rest of it, and uh, it's 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 just it is transformative for people who go from left to right. And uh, of course, I've always been in the liberty constitution uh, side of things, but I talk to many people on this program and elsewhere who've been on that other side. It is dark and it is bleak over there. Constant anger, constant jealousy, constant redistribution. This guy owes me this, this guy's that, so forth and so on. It is debilitating mentally and physically. If people would just look around and embrace liberty, look around and embrace life, it's very meaningful. It's very spiritual, as a matter of fact. And it's one of the reasons I write these books. It's not enough to do radio. It's not enough to do Levin TV. You've got to do more. I've got to do more. That's the way I look at it when I wake up. Okay, what can I do today? What can I do? How can I advance the cause? The cause of individual liberty. Kyle, Indianapolis, Indiana, the great WFDM. Go. Mark, I... I know I was going to talk about something else, but please, I beg you, can I please comment on what that last caller just talked about? Sure. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm shaken here because I'm telling you, Mark, there are so many of those people. I swear to you, Mark, there are so many of those people. I, I actually have my own version of that story, not me, but one of my uh, girlfriend's friends, you know, from Ohio, you know, in this uh, college town, you know, near here in Indiana, and she said, you know, she voted for Bernie State. It's almost, it's a... It's creepy, Mark. She voted for Bernie Sanders in the primary, or actually she was gunning and she didn't get around to it. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I was like, kind of happy about that. But um, she told me how much she respected Ted Cruz for standing up for his ideals at the Republican National Convention. She, she was really impressed with it. And I'm telling you, Mark, you know, we on the right, we're just abandoning my whole generation, basically. I was born in 1984. You know, but it's like if you, you know, weren't born during, you know, if, if, if you were born, born after Reagan's administration or during Reagan's administration, it's like you're a lost cause. I'm telling you, these people are out there, Mark. And, and actually, if, if you don't uh, Honestly, me, I'm trying to reach them. Well, I have an idea, Mark. And, and well, I, I wrote a whole book for them. I try to reach them on this program. I try to reach them with yeah. Levin TV. I know. I know, Mark. And I, you know what, if, if you'll permit me. I actually, I have a bit of an idea myself, and I don't even care if people steal it because it's, it's so important. We're running out of time. Harry, please. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, they talk about how the right needs to get into film and everything else and change the culture. It's not just that. Games, video games. I have played video games that have changed my life, that have taught me valuable life lessons, believe it or not. 
and pe- we need as conservatives. Let, let me let me slow you down. Not only do I believe this, I know you to be right. My son Chase is like a uh, is like a gamer genius, a gaming genius. He's been that way since he was actually quite young. And uh, you know, I upgraded his computer at one time, made it faster. He became extremely competitive. World of Warcraft and other and other games too. And you're exactly right. And that is a whole social phenomenon, too, because the gamers talk to each other online, and they learn teamwork, but they learn individuality, individual initiative. They learn success. It is. People used to trash this. Talk show hosts used to trash this. It's because they don't understand what's going on. I'll tell you something else as a side point, Kyle. There's a huge new sport out there. It's not that new to gamers, but it's new to guys like me. I watch it now, and they have teams and everything else. Gaming teams. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about, actually, Mark. Yeah. It became um, huge exactly in South Korea, and now it's becoming huge in America. I've, saw, I've seen that, actually. It's kind of takes... I'm still a little bit of a curmudgeon myself, I have to admit, when it comes to, like, nerds like me, you know, because I'm not huge into the social media thing like a lot of people are. Um, but... You know, and, and the thing with me, too, it's, it's more than just, like, the teamwork and the stuff. That is really good stuff. But um, I play games that have helped me to realize philosophical truths. Like, sometimes, you know, an open hand is worse than, an, than a closed fist. I learned that from a video game about Star Wars, Mark. I, I, I kid you not. I feel no shame saying that because it no, made a powerful right. point. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I play a game right now where I'm running a group in there, and I'm desperately trying... We basically, I'm not saying it, because I think that's one of the things the left has been good at doing. They've been good at vilifying, <laughs> they've been good at vilifying what America is, but I don't think they've been as good at vilifying the ideas behind America. Apparently, I, I read it, and I read something in a study that said that if you mention the word capitalism to people like my age, you know, millennials, they don't like it, they hate it, right? But they like the word, fr- the, the phrase, excuse me, free enterprise. Well, which is why I always talk about free market capitalism. All right, I got to run. I appreciate it. You know, uh, one of the companies I really like, just being honest with you, and I, I try to get to their conventions, and it's typically in the Anaheim Convention Center, and I missed it this year, but my son Chase went and uh, is Blizzard and World of Warcraft. BlizzCon, but the company's Blizzard. And uh, when I go to that convention, it is absolutely fascinating. You know what you see there? And people don't even realize that, I don't think. Capitalism all over the place. Capitalism. Competition. Success. Individuality. Each person there, you can see they have their own identity. If, if people in my generation and older, or even the generation below me, would, would, would recognize this and so forth, there are enormous opportunities there from a liberty standpoint. Absolutely. And I've seen it. And it's one of the reasons that inspired me to write Plunder and Deceit. All right, I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know, folks, it's time we just start calling liberals racist and sexist. Every time we disagree with them, I'm going to start doing that, Rich. What do you think of that? And, and let them stand on their heels and explain themselves, because this, this is what they do. And I would encourage millions and millions of you listening to do exactly the same thing. When you disagree with a liberal, just say, you know what, you're racist and you're sexist. And you're homophobic on top. I think that's what we'll start doing. Just call them what they call us. Just just kill the debate right there. I voted for Hillary. Well, then you're obviously racist, sexist, and homophobic. What do you mean? See ya. Bye. You know, friends, I have an urgent appeal to every American over the age of 50 to act now. I'd like you to join AMAC right away. Go to amac.us. Click on the Join AMAC button. It's really that simple. AMAC is the kind of organization that stands up for our national anthem. Let's stand with AMAC. Together we can push back against well-funded leftist activism. AMAC is the leading conservative organization for seniors. Well over a million of your fellow Americans have joined AMAC because they're willing to take on the serious issues we face. Illegal immigration, 
radical Islamic terrorism, sanctuary cities, religious freedom, Planned Parenthood funding, Social Security, repealing Obamacare. It's time we dust ourselves off and fight for the America we love. Send the elite leftist machine a message. We're going to turn back your big government plans. Please join AMAC right now. And by the way, it's a wonderful organization for seniors. You ought to look at their discounts and their benefits. Seriously, take a look. Please join AMAC. Forward this message to everyone you know, because together we can make a difference. Save the America you love, and at the same time, you can enjoy these benefits and discounts. The only place? AMAC. 888-262-2006. 888-262-2006. One more. 888-262-2006. Or you can go online and join AMAC. AMAC.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. <clears throat> so, if you disagree with a liberal, or they voted for Hillary, or they vote for a Democrat, just say, you know what? You're racist, sexist, homophobe. Get lost. What's wrong with that? Tom in San Diego, California, Sirius Satellite. Quickly, please, go. Good evening, Mark. Co- yes, sir. Points. Quickly. Go right for it, baby. Uh, it's a fundamental premise that the progressives are an anti-liberty, anti-freedom movement. And compromise with them by these Republicans means that we are eating away at our freedoms. And so I don't want to yep. hear from the Republicans about reaching across the aisle and compromise and getting along with these progressives because they do. They would never do the same if they were on the other side. So we must devour them. You, you are them correct. You are correct. It is time to advance the cause of the framers, liberty and the Constitution. They control everything. The Republicans now, they have a monopoly. We have a Republican monopoly in Washington. I should trademark that, too, because the backbench... Hey, 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 let me write that down. I love you, my audience. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, and emergency personnel. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it. Please check out Levin TV in two minutes. Levin TV, and I'll see you right here on the radio tomorrow.